Welcome back to r slash legal advice, where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community and without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, Coworker writes himself $2000 worth of checks and cashes them. We are in California, our new hire has ripped out a page of checks from my boss's checkbook and written multiple checks to himself and cashed them. We have already filed the police report, spoke with the bank about fraud, a locksmith is on their way. As far as our security, we seem to be just fine. Here is our problem and here is where I would like some advice. He has called in sick today and has the company car. We had intended on calling the police to arrest him today, but he has not shown up. So the plan continues forward, when or if he comes in tomorrow, if he does not, the owner will be letting him know that he's reporting the car as stolen. Reddit, do we have our bases covered? Do you see any potential flaw in our plan? Are we missing a crucial step or action? Any insight would be welcome, thank you. Edit, in this case the employee in question was allowed to use the company car as a gesture of good faith and trust in him, nothing was in place on paper anyways. If he does not report to work with our car, we can only assume that he may be onto us and getting suspicious. He clearly knows in the back of his mind that he's doing something wrong and illegal and I guess he thinks he's just going to be able to get away with it with no repercussions. And a user in the comments said, you need to at least revoke the employee's permission to use the car, after which it becomes a civil dispute. Under the circumstances, it is not Grand Theft Auto or joyriding because he had permission at the time he took the car. As a practical matter, if you have a spare key and his home address, go get the car yourself or hire a tow truck to impound it. And guys, I would love to know, did you ever have a shady coworker like this? Please let us know in the comments. And while you're at it, please don't forget to also like the video and post some star emojis in the comments to signify your support. Thank you very much in advance, this helps me out tremendously. Update: Coworker writes himself $2000 worth of checks and cashes them. Thank you all for the advice, I am really glad that my boss did not report the car as stolen, that could have gotten dicey to say the least. So the coworker decided to show up to work the day after my original post, we were shocked, we had thought that he would be halfway to Tijuana. It was a very awkward time for all of us, my boss had asked us to play casual while he called the cops. It was work as usual for me when my boss informed me that the cops would not be showing up for a couple of hours. When they showed up, the officer seemed to be completely uninformed about the situation when he asked my boss for the checks. The boss could not give him the checks, but he could give him the perp. This came as a blindside to the officer, as he stated that he had no heads up that he would be doing any arresting. He seemed very hesitant to jump into arresting the guy, until we told him that he had a couple warrants. He was on it, he called for backup and went right up to coworker. We stayed in the office, but we could hear him questioning the coworker. Another officer showed up very quickly. Coworker knows his rights, and I overheard him ask, Am I being arrested? He most definitely was after a couple calls to the station. They cuffed him and walked him off to the car. The arresting officer came back and told us that after doing a little research, the original officer with whom the first report was made never bothered to file the paperwork. Lol, what? Turns out his warrants were for some DUIs. The coworker called from jail, he was at a loss when boss told him that he knew about the check fraud, he asked if he was going to have his job back, lol what? He apologized and said he wanted to make things right. The boss dealt with it like a man and told him he just wants him to get some help and deal with his problems. He was shortly transferred to a county in which he had those warrants, we got a weird call from his mom today, she called to us that coworker won't be back until after June 8th. The boss was so surprised and confused that he just thanked her for telling him and said his goodbyes. After a short discussion with boss, I convinced him to call her back, she obviously has no idea what happened. 
He told her that he had stolen and forged checks. She, like so many of us, were shocked. She told us that she was under the impression that he was being released from jail today, but for one reason or another he would not be getting out until June 8th. He has obviously committed a lie of omission, there's really no telling what he has or has not told her, not that it really matters, she lives a couple hundred miles away and was very quick to remind us that she has no influence on his choices due to the vast distance between the two. What I would like to understand is, now that the police report has been filed and the checks turned over, should we expect our local police to receive the co-worker again? We have heard nothing from them about the current state of the investigation, so we have no way of verifying whether or not he is being released on June 8th is on the level. And a user in the comments wrote, since you did bury some questions in that wall of text, first, yes, your boss filed a report, the police will now investigate and if the evidence supports it, the DA can file charges. This is completely separate from the warrants the guy already had that led to him actually being arrested. His current arrest at this time probably has nothing to do with the checks. Number two, he could be released before new charges get filed. If charges do get filed though and an arrest warrant is issued, typically the county jail will offer to hold him for the arresting county and the arresting county arranges for a transport, this is common. Yes, if released he could skip town, sure, if you really want to you could talk to your local police about keeping you informed about the case. Side note, DUI charges and stolen checks while potential felonies are not typically fear for our safety crimes for whatever that is worth. And the next one is titled, being prosecuted slash sued for not reporting a crime I was a victim of. I, 34 male, ran away from home when I was 16 to escape serious abuse from my parents, mostly my father. My father is not a good person, he was very abusive to me and my mom. He's also a crook, the kind that cheat, steals from vulnerable people, does not pay his taxes and so on. I have not had any contact with my father from the day I left home, I never reported the abuse to the police, I only told a few people at the time and I'm not sure they believed me anyway. My mother died shortly after I left and my father married twice more, he has kids with both his second and third wives. I don't know the wives or their kids at all, not even their names. I heard through a relative that my father was arrested two or so weeks ago, I did not know the charges against him, this was to be expected one day or another so I did not give it any further thought. Three days ago though I was called by a very aggressive woman who claims to be his current wife, she was understandably upset that he was arrested, she accuses him of abusing their kids. The woman also told me that he stole from her, talked some relatives into investing in shady schemes of his and then kept the money and a variety of other accusations. I don't know which of these crimes she's been arrested for, the woman who called was very angry, she says that I enabled my father by not reporting the abuse I went through, I have no idea who told her my father abused me, she said I knew how he was and did not tell anyone and because of that he was free to marry her, abuse her and their kids and steal from her family. She said that she reported me to the police for knowingly enabling a criminal. She also said that she would take me to court for the money she lost, her and her kids suffering, just everything. She said all I had to do was denounce him and not doing so is a serious crime and I am going to pay for it because I knew. I did not think she was serious but yesterday I had a missed call from the police department of the city where my father lives. They say I need to call them back and it is about him. It seems she made good on her threat and told the police about me so now I am very worried. I did not know one could get in trouble for not reporting abuse. Should I call them back or is there a risk for me? And what can this woman sue me for exactly? Is there anything I should do about it? And a user in the comments said, you don't have a legal obligation to warn people about the abuse you suffered. You don't need to speak to the police if you don't want to, assuming you are in the US. It is unclear what she reported or why they are calling you, it may be entirely unrelated to her threats. Next one is an update to the being sued for not reporting abuse story. 
The police in the city where my father lives called me again. They told me it was about my father. I answered that he's out of my life and I don't know anything about him or his crimes and I have not talked to him in over 18 years. I thought that would be the end of it, but it turns out that my POS father used my identity in some of his fraudulent schemes, which is also why his wife was after me initially. She thought that I was aware of it and complicit. I started crapping bricks, so I took your advice and lawyered up and thankfully we were able to prove that it was identity theft easily, actually the police had no trouble believing me because he has stolen a lot of other identities. They also encouraged me to come forward about the violence to add even more weight to his other kids accusations. The officers were kind and understanding and they told me where to get help if the process is too hard on me. The third wife harassed me for a few weeks to take her rage at me and accuse me of being irresponsible and a coward for not reporting my father's abuse. She stopped communicating with me, so I imagine we are good. Anyway, if she sues me, I have a lawyer now. And the last one is titled HOA being difficult because I host support group meetings in my own home in Massachusetts. For the last 18 years I have been a member and an organizer of a support group for trauma survivors. The room we were using for our meetings in a nearby church was recently flooded and badly damaged and I have not been able to find another suitable room for our meetings due to the pandemic. Not wanting the group members to be deprived of an important resource, I decided to host some meetings in my basement or in a secluded area of my garden with a reduced number of attendees. We respect social distancing rules, wear masks, sanitize our hands and everything. This came to the knowledge of the HOA board and a few weeks ago some HOA board members knocked on my door and told me that they were not pleased with this at all. They told me that people in the neighborhood feel unsafe knowing that drug addicts gather at my house. I told them that our support group is not for people fighting addiction or maybe some of them are but they don't tell me but for trauma survivors and that this would stop as soon as we could go back to the church. They were not convinced and called me inconsiderate and asked me to stop. I did not because I consider that I have a right to invite people to my house and talk to them. Yesterday I received a strongly worded letter from the HOA demanding that I stop inviting drug addicts together at my house because it puts everyone in danger and they are not the kind of people we want in the neighborhood. They said I had a chance to make things right but didn't so they are fining me $500. They will fine me for every meeting I organize from now on and threaten me with a lien on my house if I don't pay the fines. The reason they invoke is that our meetings are breaching the peace of the neighborhood and making people unsafe. This is completely untrue. Our meetings are 6 to 7 people maximum and we don't make noise, we don't drink, people park on my driveway or on legal spots in the street, we cause absolutely no disturbance, I check the HOA rules and I cannot seem to find which one I would be breaking. Does the HOA have any right to stop me from organizing meetings at my house? I don't see how our support group is any different from having a few guests at my house. The HOA is run by people who don't seem to know what they are doing and I think that they would stop harassing me if I had real legal arguments to oppose. Thank you for your advice. And a user in the comments said, this is complicated and a firm answer would probably require a detailed reading of your HOA CC and R's by a lawyer. But there is a decent chance that they can do this. The fact that the HOA is run by people who don't seem to know what they are doing is largely irrelevant. Many HOA rules are written in such a way to exclude just the sort of activities you are engaging in, namely bringing other people into the neighborhood on a regular basis. I could run through a list of possible reasons they will feed you. It is a business run out of the home, even though you don't get paid. It is an unlicensed social club. You cannot prove that you are really doing social distancing etc, but at the end of the day they don't want undesirables with no clear link to a resident coming regularly into their space. And they will throw fines at you until you stop. You would need a lawyer to get a firm answer though. Update, I pushed back and my HOA stopped harassing me about hosting support group meetings. 
I wrote back to the HOA to dispute the fines and send a polite but firm letter asking them to show me precisely which rule I am supposed to be breaking as I was advised by commenters in here. I also pretended that I feel insulted that they are calling me and the group members drug addicts. I felt bad doing so because I know that addiction is a disease and not a sin or whatever and that I would raise hell because of this and call a lawyer. As a result, the president of the HOA called me and basically confirmed that they have not found a specific rule I would be breaking, but it was more of a general feeling people had and that I was making them uncomfortable and that should not go on. I asked why they were uncomfortable, so he talked about the fact that they think that I am letting drug addicts gather at my home and that would bring crime to the neighborhood. I explained again that the support group is not about addiction and the members are not drug addicts and the president said he knew but some homeowners have trouble accepting it. He confirmed as I suspected that there are other things they have trouble accepting about me and it is not about drugs. Then I tried my luck a little by pretending that what they are doing amounts to discrimination against people who need mental health support and they were infringing on my right to peacefully enjoy my property and was adamant that I wouldn't pay a cent in fines. He said that I seem passionate about the argument and he does not want to be involved in a legal dispute over this, so we came to an agreement that I would move as many meetings as possible online and only have people at my place when there was no other way, which makes sense with in virus times anyway. In return the HOA will drop their claim and leave me alone. I have not heard about them again, so I guess I am fine. Thanks for everyone's good advice. And I gotta say guys, this is probably the first time I see an HOA drop a dispute slash argument so quickly. Either this HOA president is not as big of a douchebag as all the other ones, or the OP is very intimidating. And the next one is titled, Tornado Warnings Seem to Bring Out the Crazies. Posted on r slash ripe stories by user Stacy Rose. And yes, this has nothing to do with legal advice, but please consider it as an interesting little bonus. Today we have had tornado warnings and people seem to be out panic shopping in droves. I had to run to the store to pick up basic supplies, nothing drastic, just some stuff to get me through the week. While at the store I watched three different instances of people freaking out over stupid little things. I will give you a rundown of each example I witnessed, I should note that I didn't know about the tornado warnings until after I finished my shopping. The first instance, the parking lot fight. Now, when I got to the store there were plenty of parking spaces, but at the same time the store was busy. Most of the free spaces were a little distance away where you would have to walk to the store. I see no problem with this since I normally park a little distance away for the extra exercise. When I pulled in my spot I saw a lady trying to back out of a handicapped spot but another lady was screaming at her about parking in a handicapped spot and how the lady in the car was not handicapped. I did see the car had a handicapped placard and I could not believe this other woman blocking her from backing out. So the lady in the car turned off the engine and got out of the car with her cane. She was an older woman with a cane and this other lady was a younger woman who just kept screaming at her. And then this old woman slowly walks up to her and said, Dear, you're blocking my car, I would like to go home. Would you mind moving out of my way? And the other lady screamed, You old bat, you're not handicapped. I need this spot and you're hogging it. The old woman then said, If you need the spot, wouldn't it be better if you moved out of my way so I could leave? Then you could pull in this spot. Where's your car anyways? Then the other woman pointed at a car with no handicap placard parked illegally in the fire zone. As I was walking by I said, your car has no handicap placard and is parked illegally. Stop harassing this woman and go find another parking spot like a normal person instead of being entitled. I kept walking as I said this shaking my head. All the yelling got the attention of an employee. When I walked inside I saw the employee talking with the entitled woman and tell the older woman to have a nice day. I did get to see the older woman pull out of the spot just to see another car with a handicap placard pull right in. Instant karma. The second instance, fighting over spaghetti sauce. In the aisle where the spaghetti sauce is, I saw two women fighting over one can of spaghetti sauce while there were other cans on the shelf. 
I simply walked over, said excuse me and grabbed another can of the shelf while these two women were still gripping the one can. They both looked at me and then at each other and then down at the can they were fighting over and then back at each other and then like out of a comedic movie they both started laughing and dropped the can almost at the same time. It was weird but I was glad it got solved quickly, I guess me saying excuse me to them and grabbing another can made them realize how crazy they were being. I could still hear them laughing as I left the aisle. The third instance, cash register fight. Now the last instance I saw was kind of crazy and I don't get the logic of this man's thinking at all in this instance. I got in line behind a line marked on the ground to help remind us to keep six feet apart. In the line next to the line I was in I saw a woman unloading her cart on the belt and then this man behind her just shoved his cart at her and started yelling at her about how she cut him in line. The woman looked surprised at this and the cashier told the man that this woman did not cut him in line and that she was there first. The cashier was being very kind and polite in her words to this man but this man did not like being talked back to. He then started yelling at the cashier and the woman and screaming how he needs a manager this minute and would not stop screaming. The manager showed up and asked the man to calm down. The man then said that woman cut me in line and your cashier is backing her up. This is all a conspiracy against me. I want you to fire the cashier and ban that woman right now. Keep in mind all of this is happening in full view of everyone and all of us were staring at this guy like he had some kind of screw loose in his head of something. The manager simply said, Sir, my employee is doing her job. This woman did nothing wrong. You are the one here causing a scene and if you don't calm down now, I will have you removed from this store instead. The man started to get upset and antsy and kept screaming how this was all a conspiracy against him because he supports Joe Biden. Some of us laughed at that one. The woman in the meantime continued unloading her cart, looking very uncomfortable. The cashier rolled her eyes and was scanning the woman's groceries. My line has not moved yet because the man in front of me had a huge cart full of stuff, but I did not mind waiting my turn. Someone else in another line then said to the irate man, Dude, shut the hell up. None of us care to hear about your political issues or your mental problems. Just wait your damn turn like a decent human being. The irate man started screaming some more and then the manager loudly said, That's it. Out. If you don't leave now, I will call the police and have you trespassed. This was the only time this irate man shut up. He looked at the manager, looked around at all of us, put his head down and walked out of the store leaving his cart where he was. That was it, no more fight left in him, the manager seemed to sigh in relief and then took the man's card and called over another employee to put the stuff back. When I finally cashed out and left the store, I kept thinking to myself, what is wrong with people? I turned on my radio and there was a weather report stating there was a tornado warning in our area for the next few hours. I just laughed to myself and loudly said to myself, well, that is what is wrong with people, the tornado warnings brings out the crazies. And I drove home. The second instance was the most mild of these three instances and I am glad things did not go overboard. And you know what the funny thing is about this whole situation? This was not at Walmart. Stay safe out there, ripe stars. Thank you very much for the interesting story Stacy. and I think not only the tornado warnings bring out the crazies but overall this virus pandemic. And I cannot really blame people for getting crazy sooner or later because it can definitely take a toll on your mental health if you ask me. And guys unfortunately we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already please also go to patreon.com slash ripe youtube where I upload exclusive reddit videos starting at just three dollars a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from youtube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.